The small South American country of Ecuador is home to 84 volcanoes. They're part of the northern volcanic zone of the Andes, and some of them are considered the most active in the world. Two of them recently woke up from their slumber with rumbling ash and explosive fire. As correspondent Dan Collins reports, it's keeping scientists and locals who live in their shadows on high alert. Living under Tungaroa is an exercise in controlling fear and dealing with the damage its eruptions leave in their wake. The name Tungarawa means throat of fire in the native Quechua tongue. It looks tranquil now, a picturesque backdrop to the green hills and valleys of Ecuador's Andes. But it didn't a few months ago. Even for those who live on the edge of this active volcano, deserting your home is hard. La gente también corría de un lado a otro buscando refugio. Había explosiones, había emanación de gases, había un calor que que se sentía aquí, o sea, algo fuerte, algo sofocante que que igual, digamos, eh, a uno también le le hacía algo extraño sentir eso a pesar de que llovía, sentíamos un calor, o sea, algo algo que nunca habíamos sentido, ¿no? Luego en la mañana, al día siguiente La preocupación de los animales, porque igual se encontraban en la parte alta, por ahí encontramos ya ganado muerto, que se había calcinado, vacas preñadas, días de parir, igual estaban así muertas. Y todo era un panorama bastante desalentador. Hay veces que siempre nos coge desprevenidos, ¿no? o a veces no se sabe qué es lo que puede hacer con, con la naturaleza. El volcán está spewing columns of ash, hundreds of meters into the sky. You can taste it in your mouth and feel it rain down on your skin and stick in your hair. The volcano's latest eruption was at the end of last year. Scientists from Ecuador's Geophysical Institute are studying how much volcanic ash is being ejected and what kind. Fresh out of university, British geologist Charlotte Barrington has joined the team. Primarily we um we collect the ash to know how much ash is being emitted from the volcano um, in total. And this is just one of the ash collection sites we have here at Volcan Tongarawa. Um, aside from this, they'll also take the ash to monitor um, changes in the composition. Should we have a new input of magma? So from the ash, if we're seeing a lot more juvenile material or ash with a lot more vesicles, so it's being broken apart, we can say that there's more pressure inside the volcano, for example, the magma's at a higher level, and perhaps it's more likely that we'd see an eruption in the near future. Zumba's house is still standing and it's used to collect volcanic ash. But the family's crops were ruined and livestock killed. This maze is still thickly coated with ash. All that can be done, says Zumba, is to plow it back into the land. But in a nearby village, help is at hand. As crops and pasture land have been covered with volcanic ash from the last eruption, the state has stepped in bringing green bananas from the coast. They're for the people, but they're mostly for the livestock. Due to the recent eruptions, the government has declared a state of emergency. Every person in the village is registered and gets their share, says Paris leader Francisco Rosero. Se puede vivir bajo un volcán, pero con las medidas en este caso pertinentes, estar preparados, tanto para eh, la movilización de las personas que es lo principal y también para estos productos, por ejemplo, dedicarnos a tener ensilaje, productos así en stock, para cuando haya estas eventualidades poder eh, dar a nuestros animales y poder no tener estas situaciones. The people here seem accustomed to the uncertainty. Even so, scientists are keeping a wary eye on the volcanoes. The local base for Ecuador's Geophysical Institute receives real-time data from dozens of stations installed around the Tungarawa and Cotopaxi volcanoes. This seismograph monitors tremors which signal volcanic activity. Meanwhile, chief volcanologist, American Patricia Mothes, is vigilant. We can never predict in the case will it be next in an hour from now that we will have a big eruption. We can say often within a certain amount of time frame, say a few hours to less than a day, that this volcano is going to erupt in a big way. Now we knew that in 2006. In August 2006, Tungarawa erupted with huge force. 
wiping out several hamlets and villages, devastating crops and killing at least six people. Thousands were displaced, but Mothez says it could have been much worse without the timely warning. We were able to give the alert uh, starting by 10 in the morning and the volcano finally had the major eruption, which was very threatening to life at uh, midnight. So we gave over a, you know, a 12 hour alert. It's quiet now, but few here doubt the power of the Tungaroa volcano. This is what's left of a house which was buried under tons of rock and ash after the last eruption nearly a decade ago. The owners got out, but only just. Tungaroa's last eruption was in November last year. For residents in the tourist town of Banos, at the foot of the volcano, evacuation drills are part of daily life. Even so, there were deaths. There were, uh, unfortunately, six deaths in the southwest side of the volcano because although people have been told to evacuate by their mayor, they choose to go back or because maybe the grandparents had, not, had refused to come out or could not get out, people went back to get them and then the pyroclastic flows came down and, and burned or suffocated them. Their bodies were never found. Volcanoes have sculpted this beautiful landscape leaving it with fertile soil, but also constant changes. Over centuries, pyroclastic flows, a mixture of gases, rock and ash, have rained down. And lahars, rivers of volcanic mud and ash, have covered everything in their path. Esta es una de las quebradas principales por donde ha bajado varios flujos de lodo del volcán Tunguragua. Aquí ha sido varias veces, al menos unos cinco intentos de tratar de construir un puente por la quebrada para permitir el paso a la vía. Pero no ha sido muy útil y ha sido la destrucción siempre constante aquí. Entonces cada que llueve bajan las jares por esta quebrada. While residents can save their lives, there's little they can do to protect their land and crops from nature's whim. It often comes down to which way the wind blows the acidic volcanic ash. Quema la piel y además de eso nuestros cultivos. Como pueden observar las moras, la flor quema. Las eh, la, el fruto que ya está casi maduro empieza como a como si de cogiera una helada, le quema también a la fruta y cae. Entonces imagínense después de esto toca cuánta inversión hacer para que nuevamente las plantas vuelvan a producir. Norma Robolino's family have been farming this land for generations. Nacimos, amamos al suelo, amamos esta tierra. Entonces eh, ya prácticamente el volcán ya se, se nos hace ya familiar. Sino que ya ojalá ya que se calme ya. Just months before Tungarawa erupted, Cotopaxi, Ecuador's highest active volcano, rumbled back into life 138 years after its last eruption. Peeking through this bank of cloud, you can just make out one of the world's highest and one of Ecuador's most active volcanoes, Cotopaxi. The country has been on alert since it started erupting in August. As experts predict, a powerful eruption could even impact the capital city. Scientists say a powerful eruption is unlikely, but the closure of the Cotopaxi National Park, a major tourist attraction, has hit the local economy in nearby Latacunga. El turismo está prácticamente en cero. Hemos estado tratando de, 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 de sobresalir. Eh, solamente llegan las cancelaciones de, la, de las reservas, solo cancelaciones, y la gente no ingresa. Entonces, estamos en una, una situación muy eh, asfixiante. The volcano is just 50 kilometers south of Ecuador's capital, Quito, and its population of more than two and a half million people. The Pacific Ring of Fire, a volcanic and earthquake-prone belt which circumscribes the ocean, has given Ecuador its unique natural attractions. Choosing to live close to some of the most powerful forces on our planet has its attractions, but it also means living life on the edge.